brick church with mortar and glass. They said, don't want it. Why not? They said, we be Holy Ghost Temple. We make church. We are the church. I said, well, that's more biblical than what we got. And what I was thinking was Ephesians 2, 21 and 22. He's right. Everyone that's born again the world over, grafted into the Spirit of God through the Holy Ghost, by grace through faith, we collectively make up that one holy temple that God dwells in for a habitation through that Holy Spirit. We are the church. You are the church. Not gonna be. You are. We need not be the temple of the Holy Spirit. Him that defiles that temple, him will God destroy. Be careful how we live. Be careful what you say about the temple of God. Be careful that you don't rail on some man or woman of God that happens to be the apple of God's eye, lest you drop dead for defiling the temple of God. It's a scary thing to fall into the hands of a living God. For our God is a consuming fire. Last temple last dwelling place. One time, end of the world. Eternal blood offered for eternal redemption, which works out for you an eternal inheritance. Nothing temporary about it. It's a for sure thing. It couldn't be any sure than God. Therefore, I hear the Lord right now in my spirit saying, What the Lord doeth is forever. No man can add to it or take from it. Sinless. What's the difference between the first one and the second? The first covenant was a covenant not only of works, but of conditions. God said, do this and I'll do that. The reverse of that was, if you don't do that, mm, not good. The difference in the second one is, I shall and you will. Why? Because God took it upon himself. Now I'm going to give you one last thing to close with. And I got this from Rick Kazee at his service one night. Are you ready for it? Pretty sweet, really. Here's the difference between the Old Covenant and the New. In the Old Covenant, when the Levitical priest would lay a lamb, a literal physical lamb, bleed it of its blood and apply the blood to the mercy seat, and they would lay it for an offering. And if God was pleased, the fire of God would come down and consume it. Do you understand that? When God was happy, He sent fire to consume, like on Mount Carmel. When He showed Himself to be the true God, the God that answers by fire is the true God. Under the Levitical priesthood, He offered a lamb, and the fire of God would come down and lick it up. God. Are you ready for this? But under the grace covenant, it's just the opposite. The offering laid to be consumed wasn't consumed. It consumed the fire. The Lamb of God consumed all of the fires of hell for those covered under that blood. Under the first covenant, the fire devoured the lamb. But under the second one, the lamb of God devoured, devoured the fire that was to take us to hell and torment us forever. Under that covenant, the lamb of 
God consumes the fire. That's who satisfied the wrath of God. Jesus Christ, the righteous. God bless you. I pray that you got something out of this teaching. I pray that you find the blood of Jesus Christ because the only thing that's going to matter when you're ready at the end of your life is that your name be enrolled in the Lamb's Book of Life by the blood that flowed down the cross of Calvary from Jesus Christ. God bless you.